Fight to save Roo Gully, a world-famous animal sanctuary south of Perth. The Roos are known around the world, starring in a popular TV series. But now the future of the orphaned Roos could be bleak. Graham Butler reports. It is my life. It's what I want to do forever. I want to be, I want my ashes to go here. You should care because, well, for one reason, these little ones, uh, we should care because it's, Australia should be proud of its wildlife. They're the real Aussie butler, like the original Aussie butler. They mightn't know it yet, but these kangaroos are really facing the battle of their lives. They've already beaten the odds to be here at all. But the sanctuary they call home, and TV viewers across the world have come to know as Rue Gully, is under threat. It keeps me awake a lot of nights. And uh, I just want the place to carry on. That's all I want it to do. The lives of Carol Lander, her now ex-husband, and their mob of kangaroos played out on TV in the Rue Gully Diaries. But what started as a fly-on-the-wall look at a working wildlife sanctuary ended up documenting the collapse of a marriage. Roy's not coming back to the sanctuary and their 34-year marriage. He's decided to live with Anka in the Netherlands. It was the most devastating news I'd ever received. The TV series that put this little corner of Australia on the map is still being shown overseas. But sadly, the final entry in the Rue Gully Diaries could read, sold to the highest bidder. You see, this property could be on the market in just a couple of weeks. And what that means for these Rues is anyone's guess. I wouldn't want to shoot them. I think I would go down the course of tranquilizing them and getting the vet to use them and them, humanely. I wouldn't. I don't think I could bring my, I couldn't bring myself to do that at all. It's hardly surprising Carol is near breaking point at the thought of selling Rue Gully. To her, these Rues are more than wildlife, they're more like family. She knows every one of them. She's watched them be born and die. Yes, believe it or not, I am part of the mob. I am the matriarch of the mob. Um, I get challenged by the other females who want to see if they can take over from me, which is quite interesting at time. The boys actually are very gentle with me. They actually respect me, which is really nice. But yes, I am a part of their mob. Carol is such a part of the mob that when orphan Joey's arrive, they find a surrogate mother and a warm bed. Are you the crazy kangaroo lady of Boy Up Brook? I don't know, I suppose a lot of the kids call me Kangaroo Carol. Um, but a lot of the people in the town like this place. Um, I suppose I was looked on a little bit eccentric when I first came here and started doing this. But now I think they can see that I'm harmless, really. <laughs> the Rue Gully Sanctuary in Boy Up Brook takes in orphaned and injured wildlife of all sorts. Some are returned to the wild, others, like these Rues, live out their days on the property. It's like a living laboratory that attracts university students and science graduates from around the world. What begins as a study often becomes a passion. Suzanne Kessens from Holland has returned for her fifth stay. Rue Gully for me and for a lot of people means Carol and all the Rues and the property here in Boyabrook. And for that not to be there anymore, yeah, I just can't, can't think of that, to be honest. Rue Gully is a registered charity, but with charity dollars hard to come by, volunteers like Suzanne are now hoping and praying someone comes to the rescue of Rue Gully. The last couple of weeks, um, the only thing we've been doing or I've been thinking about is how can we stop this from happening? You should care just because this is the heritage and the history of Australia going down the drain if you don't help it. We're trying to make up a, set up a rescue plan for Rugali to see how we can get enough funds uh, for the property. And what we're doing now is see, look at all the, the money streams there might be, so funds from the government, uh, NGOs, private funds maybe. Apart from the volunteers that have travelled across the world to be part of the Rue Valley experience, tourists also flock to get up close and personal with the kangaroos. 
Nolene King works for a local tour company. We get um, Perth people, we have some German, you know, German people coming, United, um, United Kingdom, United States, um, and we get locals as well. We bring between, sometimes we'll bring 18 people, sometimes we'll bring two or three people, just depends how many are booked on. Other visitors have followed the trials and tribulations of Rue Gully through the TV series and have just come to see it for themselves. I was just into that interest that I just wanted to follow it through, and which we did, and, and I have. If Carol loses half of the property and is forced to sell up, she could try to find another smaller bush block to continue her work, but it's doubtful she'll be able to take these kangaroos with her. There are some that we could maybe try and get into other places but there's quite a few animals here that um, would probably have to be euthanized because they can't go back to the wild. Time is running out for the kangaroos, but Carol Lander is still hoping her Rue Gully diaries can continue to be written. I just want to know it's secure. I want the worry gone. I just want to carry on my work. And I want to know that these animals here are secure. Not just these, all the ones that still need it. If you'd like to help Rue Gully, check our website for details, sevenperth.com.au.